back. Let us see signature morning on signature television. And of course, we'll be moving ahead to another discussion with our guests in the studio already. We'll be talking about EEDC -E and EERC, who controls manpower in Enugu. And we have our guests. Emekeze, Mr. Emekeze, Corporate Affairs Manager, Enugu Electricity Distribution Company, EEDC, Enugu. Good morning and welcome, sir. Good morning. How Good morning. are you doing this Fine, morning? Thank you. We're Good morning, talking about. Rebecca. Good morning, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, when we talk about EEDC and uh, EERC, uh, I would want to know what are the primary functions and areas of our authority of both EEDC and EERC? Okay, thank you very much. I think uh, if you're mentioning EERC, I think it's uh, better you you use uh, main power mm. because main power is a subsidiary that has been you know uh, registered to interface with EERC. EERC is a regulator. Um, um, uh, main power is a distribution company that is operating that has been licensed by EERC to distribute electricity within. Enugu State Ring Fence. Um, EEDC is only the holding company. Of course, you know that EEDC uh, covers five southeast states, and by virtue of the um, approved Electricity Act of 2023, Enugu State had to enact the, their own law to, you know, play in that field. The Act allows states to now generate, transmit, and distribute electricity. So Enugu State, um, I must say, is the first state that has, uh, you know, enacted that enacted the law and have closed up the whole transaction by setting up their own regulatory commission to regulate the electricity market in the state. So to answer your question, EERC is a regulator. Before now, we had NEC. NEC is a National Nigeria Electricity Regulatory Commission that was before now regulating both Enugu State and other spaces. But with the um, enactment of the um, electricity law in Enugu State and the setting up of uh, the Enugu State Electricity Regulatory Commission, NEC ceases to oversee um, the um, electricity space within Enugu State, is now EERC. And uh, EEDC had to set up a subsidiary company for that purpose, for that purpose of distributing electricity within Enugu State. We still have presence in uh, Anambra, in Abia, in uh, Ebony, and Imo states. So EERC commissions main power to distribute licensed main power to okay. distribute licensed main power to mm. distribute electricity, electricity within Enugu State. Yes. Can EERC do the same for another company? Yes. It so can, you, you could do that for up to 10 companies? It can do power. the same. And how does that affect your operation? In any way? Yeah. Um, uh, part, part of the whole idea is to create that enabling environment for investment to come in. If you also recall, uh, uh, part of the major concerns of the distribution company or the power sector is funding investment and with what Enugu State has done investors can now come into play so there might be off-grid arrangements there might be um, uh, mini grids and a whole lot of renewable uh, energy mix arrangements to improve on the quantum that Enugu State is getting remember um, EDC before now gets allocation from the grid so with this arrangement by Enugu State uh, Government, uh, you now have improved or increased quantum of energy generated within the state. You can have a five megawatts license to generate for, for a, a particular a, a, location. A, yes, say, yes. Say like a local government. A local government. government a town, tank, or a state. state. You understand? Okay. Off-grid arrangement. Off -grid yeah. Okay. Uh, main power takes care of the grid uh, power because they are picking from the grid so EERC can license some other distribution companies, companies. maybe you get some areas that have not had access to power I'm sure you are aware that there are areas that 
uh, they don't have access to power. So these distributors can set up their off-grid plants and generate and distribute within those spaces. So these are some of the you know uh, positive impacts that this initiative is bringing to the space. And by the time you know it, uh, cumulatively, the quantum that is coming to Enugu State will improve. But how does that affect you directly? Um, I mean, it's the customers that we are, we are looking at here. The grid power that we are receiving will be distributed and the revenue uh, that uh, we have pushed out re re recovered. So if you ask me, directly i would say is not really an issue uh, because um, the market is there are areas that are yet to be tapped you know harnessed and uh, this uh, whole arrangement has opened up for those but assuming we had the resources assuming we had the means and uh, we are present at those areas you begin to ask how it will affect us because yeah. where i'm operating i mean it will be it will it will it will not be proper to now have another distribution company that's operating the, within that. that's exactly yeah. where, where i was headed wouldn't there be a situation where people would now start saying or these companies would now start saying can we have an alternative to eedc say mm -hmm. for instance even in your coverage area mm -hmm. we have companies who distribute uh, power and i can give some of these e areas power you know in, in, in your stead if there are reasons if we are not living up to that's the only way that can happen. If he, that, even if you are the um, uh, handing over ceremony, sure. the chairman made mention that if we fail to live up to our expectations. So the whole idea is now for EEDC to ensure that those areas where you have presence, you are, have you know, living up to, you know, expectation. Yeah. If there are arrangements where the licensed generation companies are able to generate and add to what we are getting, you know they, it can work both ways the generation companies can generate and add to the allocation we are getting to improve oh. on the services that we are giving to customers these are you know um collaborations that can also happen to improve on the quality of service that uh, end users are getting can you talk on the meter upgrade okay um meter upgrade is uh a program that has been known for over two years uh, just recently we tried to push out communication to remind our customers that by 24th of november if you've not upgraded your meter you might stand the chance of losing that meter we've been on this for over two years and uh, is uh, something that is happening globally where the token identifier is rolling over you know it's like a counter when it gets to a certain uh, the digits it starts all over again so the token identifier which is used by sts meter standard uh, to, uh, transfer uh, st uh, specification meters is going to roll over and what the customers need to do to remain uh, uh, to continue to receive service and enjoy the service is to upgrade their meter and it's a simple exercise We've done it in such a way that uh, it's uh, seamless. All you need to do is the same way you go to recharge your meter, buy a token. If you are now buying a token, it will come with uh, three sets of 20 digit token, which you expected to punch into your meter. You know, the same way you punch in your token, but this time around, there will be three sets. The first one, KCT one, key change token one, the second one, key change token two, and the third one is the energy token. You punch them in simultaneously, punch in the first one, punch in the second one, and your token. Your meter is upgraded. So, um, is to prepare these meters for the new generation of tokens that they will begin to receive. If you don't upgrade your meter, I'm sorry, by the time it's 24th november you will not be able and you use up the token that you currently have in your meter you will not be able to do they pay for meter. the upgrade pardon do they pay for the upgrade it's free you don't pay <laughs> you just the same way you buy you recharge your meter you go buy your token you normally get 20 digits single 20 digits mm. but this time around you get three sets of those 20 digits first 20 second 20 the, and the third 20 and you punch them in one after the other after punching in the first 20 you press enter the meter ac accepts that you punch in the second one you press enter the meter accepts it and you punch in the third one um 
I, I'm not sure I've done that before uh, because I, I know there was an upgrade that happened some few months back. Yeah. If you've but done, sure. if you've done that, then you've done it. If no, you've been been two, two, three, two, If you've been recharging, numbers. if you've been recharging your meter, you know we had uh, we migrated our vending platform in February. Yes. And that is in readiness for this uh, whole exercise. Okay. So anybody that has not recharged his or her meter from that February till date should try and do so because your keychain token is waiting for you to activate it okay. and you can only activate it when you go to vent okay if you go to recharge your meter let me be using the language that yeah. we have yeah. there with there. if you go to recharge your meter and you buy a token assuming you buy ten thousand or five thousand usually you get a single digit single 20 digit uh, token mm -hmm. which you punch in and uh, but this time around you have three three of those sets the key change one, key change token one, key change token two, two and the, 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 to, the token proper. Yeah. So you punch them in one no, after no, no. the other, you know, and you have your meter upgraded. So some people get scared mm -hmm. about this upgrading because they feel that when they do that, it seems that the meter starts, yeah. starts get, getting uh, faster. You know, these are concerns more. that, uh, you know, we um, uh, get out there. The regulator at some points came out to issue a statement telling them that it is their, in their best interest to have their meter upgraded and it has nothing to do with the way the meter is running and all that so uh, 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 unfortunately anything any initiative that we're introducing people Start the antennas will come out this is a call for you to upgrade them if you still feel uh, that is for uh, if you upgrade it, the meter will continue to run maybe you wait until after 24th <laughs> we'll now know who will uh, who will uh, be be crying because the cost of meter now is not something you want to you know joke with uh, it's a simple exercise it's not it has nothing to do with the operate the way the meter runs and all that it's just to make it fit for the new sets of 20 digit token that will be generated a lot of customers have uh, um, had their meters upgraded we're just making this call for those that are waiting for dying minutes you know in this environment a lot of us are used to uh, there's still time there's this time by the time you know you're caught up with the uh, deadline and uh, we begin to have um, reactions and this communication has been consistently going out for get about two years now but you know, the it, people it, it people don't like hear stopped. that yeah Pardon? If it felt like it stopped at some point. No, it is it's not that it stopped. We 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 after our upgrade, we continued the engagement and we kind of uh, rested the campaign. It was a campaign that you know ran for a long time. We rested it and people as they are vending, they are getting the token and the the upgrade is happening. Mm. So what we just did is to kind of a reminder. You know that the time is near try and uh, do this if you have not done that all right uh, quite interesting I, i'm still really concerned about this new system of things as it stands eerc you are under eerc you are we are, regulated, to we are regulated by eerc hey, automatically you are yeah. yeah. under yeah. that you answer able to yes that. yes yeah do you foresee a situation where there might be friction and when there is friction who solves the problem i mean you can't have friction with your regulator i mean do you have friction with the mbc your mm. regulator they have uh, uh, what do you call it now regulations mm -hmm. and uh, you Other play by the rules if they are if you have found one thing sanction will be you know the method on you so there is no we are not we, we, we are not uh, we don't have a choice but to play by the rules and the regulator is there to ensure that um, you know things go the right way uh, but that is not to say that um, uh, we do not have a say most times when regulations are being introduced they also get consulted they do a kind of consultative uh, session where they, they they allow players to air their views on a particular regulation that is being introduced so it's, it's something that um, is a mutual um, arrangement you, you, you made mention of a private investment that with what has happened there will be a lot of private investments in that space is it lucrative because i know several you've also said things like 
power losses you know you guys don't really get what you need to get whenever power is distributed every month mm. that the numbers keeps dropping mm. and, and I'm, I'm i'm thinking uh, like um is that space lucrative enough for investment to 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 step in because we could start this and then not even have investment in another two three four five years okay you know electricity is critical you know all the plans of the state government without electricity cannot be achieved and what the state government has tried to do is to make that environment attractive um, there's no way if everything is in place there's no way you can invest in the power sector without you know make having it uh, yield uh, dividends or result but what has happened here is that there are uh, a lot of things that are not in place um, part of uh, the uh, position of the regulator is that customers has to be metered you know for energy accountability also the investment needs to be made in the network to strengthen it to be able to you know deliver these investments will happen and the end users will get service and pay for it you can only make it lucrative when you're paying and effort will be made to you know block all those uh, loopholes where uh, people take uh, uh, undermine the activities people steal energy people uh, vandalize uh, infrastructures and all those these are things that are impeding on the in the progress that the uh, players are making so if all things uh, uh, are in place in the right place this business is a lucrative one because everybody needs power in their homes most businesses need power and if they are using it and they are paying the business uh, the drivers will be able to put more money in the space but where you're not you're putting money and you're not getting returns it becomes a problem but um, I, I believe that uh, with the arrangement that we have on ground uh, it's going to yield um, good results it might not happen in the immediate it's a long-term you know arrangement where uh, the players will begin to recover their revenue you know gradually mm, let's talk about the uh, Enugu electricity consumers right now how do you think that this whole control is going to affect them do you think it's going to benefit them mm -hmm. of course it's going to benefit them in you what know, way i started our, by saying that uh, the customers the customers the end users are people we have in mind whenever uh, you know such programs or initiatives are being introduced um efficiency you know quality and reliable power that's what the customers uh, expect of the distribution company. Efficient, quality, and reliable power. But and hasn't we been the, there? Pardon? Hasn't it been there before? I mean, if you look at the the um, effort being made now, it will be more than it was before. Remember that uh, we had situations where uh, some people are getting 20 hours. Some people are getting eight hours. This whole arrangement is going to, you know, um, um, uh, close up those gaps. Everybody has the right to get 20 hours or 24 hours. And by the time the quantum that we are getting is improved upon, I mean, everybody gets it. And when you are now metered, you can now begin to, you know, regulate your consumption. And, um, uh, there's no way there's no two ways about it the end users are better off for this whole arrangement we want them to you know see it from that point a lot of uh, misconceptions and um, apprehension is out there but is for the overall uh, benefit of uh, customers. let's talk about those that are not metered already so how uh, how is this policy you know going to uh, uh, benefit them too those How is that, it going to affect them? Those the, that are not yet meter. Yeah, the arrangement is also to uh, scale up the Metroid. meter penetration. Um, the Honorable Commissioner for Science and Technology was at the um, um, a, a license presentation. I made mention of, you know, bringing in meter 
okay. you know, meter manufacturers. Like I said, this thing is going to open up uh, the uh, 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 value chain. Mm. You bring in meter uh, <coughs> manufacturers, bring in um, energy generating companies. That day, a license was also presented to one of uh, the first energy generation company in Enugu State that is already. Uh, I think they have a 4 megawatts plant somewhere at Night Mile and they have the license to generate 10 megawatts. So these are some of the things that will happen. And ultimately, I can assure you that uh, it will improve the lives of the um, um, citizens of Enugu. All we need to do is to support uh, the whole initiative. And to support it is by paying. There's no way it's coming at a cost electricity comes at a cost from the generation transmission distribution and you use it you have to pay for it and they also the regulator is also going to make sure that the right tariff is applied that is an area that they are also you know um, 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 looking at to ensure that uh, the tariff is uh, fair for all and also that the players are able to run the business to pro provide the kind of service. That All right, I'm looking at one of the flyers you released regarding uh, this um, upgrade. Uh, four easy steps to upgrade your prepaid mm -hmm. meter. Um, update your information using this link. Mm -hmm. Now, this link is going to be sent to you via your phone or is it going to be sent to you through so so some other means? No, you can click on what we did was uh, deploy them on our social media handles. Okay. Or if you see, you can type it and you okay, so activate you, you just type in and click it mm. and you punch in your so, uh, meter number and your email, phone number, email. It's also a way of gathering data. Part of the part of the challenge uh, we have is uh, quality of data. Mm. You have customers and you don't have their information. And in this age of technology, where you want to have personal relationship with your customers, you have communication, you push it directly to your customers, you're not able to do it because you don't have the data. So it's a conscious way of harvesting these data of your customers. Okay, you know? so, so this particular um, link. link can be used anytime. It can so be used. Go if you click on it and you see the information required, you fill it and it, it won't take you up to... Uh, 20 seconds and you'll be oh, automatically oh, upgraded and all of these tokens will be sent to you no it's it's just that's one step okay the next step is for you to go and vent to go and recharge okay. as soon as we, after you do this yeah after, when you go and recharge, you go and recharge the, is, your is first the, recharge, the first recharge the first recharge after that that's, rollover that uh, rollover we did in february uh, you know i told you we upgraded our vending platform mm -hmm. to be in sync with the new uh, token identifier that has been uh, introduced. Mm -hmm. So after that uh, February event, anybody that recharges his or her meter will get those three tokens activated. If, for example, you've not recharged your meter since January this year, mm -hmm. if you go now to recharge your meter, you will get those three sets of. But what, what if you have recharged over time and this token hasn't been sent? No, there's no way. It's, it's not possible. It's not possible. You must have done it. There's also another concern about people saying that people get upgraded without their knowledge. Is that possible? Uh, upgraded, I'm, I'm sure you're referring to the um, band feeder upgrade. Yes, mm. feeder upgrade. There's a, a procedure for upgrading feeders. Procedure? Yes, there's a pro procedure as approved by the regulator. And uh, once we identify a feeder that we feel is strong enough to deliver you know, ban A service, we apply to the regulator. What if the person on, the, on that same service does not want it? Want it's, not your, it's not your call. Are you serious? It's not your but, call. but they it's, pay. They are the ones pay, paying. You pay. That is where energy management come in. See, the whole idea is to have everywhere Little. get, have access to 24-7. It's now your call to begin to manage your consumption. I'm giving you 24-7. You don't want 24-7. You want eight hours. Mm -hmm. No problem. You can turn off your appliances. <laughs> you can I don't want to be put, 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 put there at all. <laughs> because you know, nobody wants to turn up at all. You know the interesting thing? Before now, people were saying, you guys, you can't give us 24 hours. We mm -hmm. want 24 hours, we'll pay. 
now you're getting 24 hours is no, now it's no, no, what no, 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 no po the point is because you you upgrade <laughs> without their consent we can't we don't see we communicate to you we can communicate to you but we don't need we've been given a mandate to improve on the quality of service we're giving to you i'm just telling you what this whole arrangement for any good state will will mean to the customers it will mean efficiency it will mean improved service delivery and you should be ready to pay for it and i've said electricity is not cheap if you want if you feel it's going to be remember the band a has uh, the subsidy removed so there's no subsidy you're paying the actual, actual cost of so these guys coming into play there's no subsidy for them so be ready to pay the actual cost of electricity so uh, a situation where somebody is uh, in a feeder that is band a feeder is saying he doesn't want uh, unfortunately it can't happen <laughs> all we advise you to do is to you know Imbibe Manage energy your... management yeah. culture. Okay. Yeah. You know, that's the only way out of it. Fair enough. But service will be there for you anytime you want it. And uh, you pay for it according to how your purchasing power, you know, can Good. carry you. Thank right. you very much. Thank you. Um, Mekeze, Mr. Mekeze, mm -hmm. uh, for your time this morning. He's the Corporate uh, Affairs Manager, Enugu Electric Electricity Distribution Company. EDC. Thank you for your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you for having me.